All right, check out this harvest. 139 of these tomatoes, and they look so tasty. Guten yardening, everybody. All right, let's move in here and collect our first ever okra. are a little bit big and from my understanding these might taste a little woody but Dan Permaculture Food Forest has a really nice recipe for these it involves an awful lot of garlic and I do love garlic I don't know if I go that heavy on it but we're gonna try out what he suggested which also involves some plantain along with it and some cucumber and well we love plantain so we're gonna harvest the rest of these There we go. So how many do we have? We got three off of these, and we're gonna go get the rest off the other plants as well. All right, let's get these off our, our wind-swept variety. They're nice and strong, but I think when there's this much wind consistently, and when there's this much moisture in the soil, they might have a tendency to get blown over like this. All right, let's get this one over here off to the side. A little bit smaller, but I do want to taste the difference of the smaller ones that we have or that we're harvesting here versus letting them get so big and see if there's a substantial difference in the taste and the woodiness of it all. Let's get in here and get these pulled off before any more of them go to waste. These are absolutely delicious. Mm. For a nice snack. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. It's so windy out. Oh, the wind is, this one's pretty top heavy with all the fruit. And the wind is not doing us any favor. I'm gonna have to stabilize that up. That almost fell completely over. All right, let's get the rest of these fruits off quickly to lighten this plant up and get these inside. Oh man, that was a little bit scary there. Almost came over on top of me. We'll see how many we can harvest off this plant. Look how beautiful those are. All right, check out this harvest. 139 of these tomatoes, and they look so tasty. Oh, there's a little bit of damage. We'll call it 138 of these tomatoes. Yeah, we're gonna enjoy those. And there's still plenty more on this one coming in. Again, I gotta really work to strengthen this because the wind has knocked it around quite a bit. But I see another 50 at least, I'd say 50 plus tomatoes on here still growing in. So we'll see how long we can keep this and keep it growing. And we're gonna get down in here and harvest some of these red peppers. Again, these are supposed to be pimento peppers. So these really remind me of those uh, donut peaches, if you know what I'm talking about, the ones that <laughs> look like a inner tube almost. But these are ripe. We could have picked them when they were green but they've reddened up nicely. So we'll see how many we get in our harvest here. We'll come over here. You know some of our peppers here are also starting to turn. All right. Oh, I picked this one a little bit early, hadn't fully changed. It'll still be good. Down in here. Uh, it looks like we have one or two. Here, I'll show you that we left on here a little bit too long. So this one has some damage up top and you can start to see it getting soft down here as well. So I don't know if there's gonna be anything usable there, but we'll see. Again, it all comes back to planning and timing for these harvests. We can't let anything go too long 
where the end result is we have loss that we shouldn't have had. But this one looks perfect. So we're gonna get that one right there, which gives us four really nice red peppers, pimento peppers. We're also back here with our frying peppers, and they're starting to turn as well. This one just looks so unique. I wanna cut it off and show you the difference because we've been harvesting these green and they taste great, but they do turn a red and there's some in here that have turned even more so. They also seem to be like shriveling up or twisting up as they mature because none of the none of the ones that are green up top look like this. But isn't that a pretty color of pepper? And again, they, they're sweet and they taste nice, but <laughs> <laughs> they look so mutated as they ripen. That's interesting. Right, this one's gonna be a little bit harder for you to see, so I'm just gonna have to cut these and bring them up to show you because there's so many and they're all the way down here. These are our eggplants. There we go. And we have quite a few eggplant here. This is the size we like them. We, we do have some that are bigger, but this size is just really tasty. I mean, you know, it has that a really nice flavor here is full size as well but by this point to, to us anyway here I'll bring it a little bit closer to us it feels like it's getting a little tougher yeah most of these still look really good these are gonna be really nice and delicious I'm picking some of these before they're fully ripe because what I'm noticing is there's some black beetles back in here and I don't want those to compromise these tomatoes before they even get ripe. So we'll let these ripen inside and we'll still enjoy them. They'll, they'll still sweeten up and they'll, they'll be just fine. But if I left them out here, I think they'd probably go to waste. So we gotta harvest them, even some of these bigger ones, even if they're not ripe. I'm just getting started harvesting these and I'm clearly going to need more and bigger containers. So I have to go get those and we'll keep harvesting. Right, we're moving on to this side. We've got more and again, different varieties. Each one of these that I'm harvesting right now is a different variety from the previous one. So not only do we enjoy all these different tomatoes, but now we also get to see which ones we like the best and determine if we want to grow them again next year. Well, these orange ones are super, super sweet. Mm. In years past, the orange have always been my favorite. You can see them right there. Yeah, they're just super sweet and delicious. And these, which are the uh, pink bumblebee, are also super sweet. It's our first year growing the pink bumblebee they're a little bit bigger, but they're nice and tender, and again, very sweet. These are 10 Fingers of Naples tomatoes. Again, we haven't tried these before. These look more like a paste tomato to me. Um, they definitely, uh, when I've eaten them, they're, they're, they've got that beefier, kind of less juicy quality. This one has some little bit of damage here as well, but, um, but they're still good. They're still good, and this is produced quite a bit. This had found its way onto the ground, and you can see what's been causing some of our damage. Oh, it just popped off. Oh, there's another one. These black beetles, and they're all the way through this tomato, so this one's no good. But we also see on this tomato that found its way to the ground, there's a slug. And it doesn't look like the interior of this tomato has any damage. We want to get rid of this slug, and we hadn't really had problems with slugs, except maybe we saw a few of them. Um, but there you go. This is an example. We try to there we go. It's not blurry anymore This is an example of some of the slugs that we have apparently in our area I'm gonna get these out of the ground with another rainstorm coming. We really don't want to run the risk of them rotting in here Again, they've cured up pretty well We should have pulled them out and let them cure that way, but they still have cured up pretty well their necks are in pretty good shape. Still a little bit of moisture, but we'll get these inside. We'll probably have to use these up before the other ones. We'll see, but it's still gonna be a good harvest. And some of these have some pretty good size to them. So that's good. And they're still nice and firm. So even though we waited a while, 
These are still nice and firm. We just need to get the rest of them out of the ground. Most of these are perfectly fine. They're in good shape. They're just sitting in the ground basically now. Um, so we're gonna be able to get these out, bring them inside. And they've got some fried potatoes written all over them. <laughs> well, that's not too shabby for a second harvest. Look at the size of this onion. Would have loved to have even more like this. But yeah, we'll take this as a second harvest. This will last us for quite a while. We're also gonna take this time to harvest a couple of our leeks. See, these look really nice. Pull a couple of them out here. And we're gonna try some of these. Looks like that one was a twofer. We're gonna try some of these tonight. Haven't had leeks in a long time. So we'll try some of these tonight. These have been in the ground again for, wow, four, four and a half months. Long time. They take forever. And now we're over by our storm damaged, storm tossed tomato plant. And I'm thinking, based on the number of ripe tomatoes here, this is going to be by far our biggest tomato harvest overall of the season. And we still have a few that are splitting, but I mean, there's, there's a ton here that are perfectly ripe. So I gotta get all of these harvested and then move over to the compost bin and get those harvested as well. We made our way over to the compost bin tomatoes where we got 100 plus the other day. Oh, drop one. And so we're, we're gonna do the same. I can, I can already tell we're gonna do the same here today with this one. We've got a ton more to harvest here. And then I think we're gonna head over to those patty pan squash, those uh, sunburst summer squash and get those collected as well. These summer squash are looking absolutely great. These, um, this is the right size. And guess what? This is the right size. <laughs> Even if they're better, smaller, any size that you're getting out of here, we can find some way to cook them up, prepare them up. This is the right size. Uh, we'll take any harvest, really. We'll take any harvest right now because these, oh, look at that beautiful green color and the yellow. These are all perfect for us. We're gonna enjoy every single one of them. All right, we're a little bit farther down in compost row. We're gonna see what we have down in here as far as eggplants go. You remember, we just harvested a bunch of eggplants from here last week. And here we are. This one's a little light, but here we go. Three beautiful eggplant coming out of there. And there's actually another one right here, but we're gonna give this one another day. There's another one right here, and there's more coming in even farther up. So prolific? I think so. And um, we're going to leave, we have a bunch of peppers over here. And I'm gonna try leaving a couple of these to see how uh, they turn colors here in a little bit. This seems to me like it's a pretty big tomato harvest all around the focus of this video. <laughs> Just because we haven't harvested some of our tomatoes um, out here on the patio and they're definitely ready to be harvested. Again, we see some damage here, maybe some in insect damage. Um, at least we're not seeing that blossom end rot that we saw early on. But we have some work to do to improve the way our tomatoes look on our patio garden. But that being said, from one plant here, as I finish pulling these off, from one plant here, we're still getting a pretty good turnout. Oops, I be careful. Waste any of these. We're still getting a pretty good turnout from one plant, even though this one looks uh, a little less desirable. I'd say overall, once we cut this open, we'll see if there's anything inside. But overall, those look pretty good, and we still have a whole bunch more to harvest over here on our patio. These are some of the other plants that were knocked over or really thrashed about would be a, probably a, a good poetic way to describe what happened to these tomatoes. They were absolutely hit hard by the wind because here on the patio, there really is no shelter from that wind. Um, so they were, they were really bandied about, but they've, they've withstood. And even though we seem to have this magnesium deficiency that causes it to look like this, we're still getting, again, these beautiful fruits off of them. And over here, our other orange tomato. I'll pull a 
couple of these off. There's a split right there, but just in general, these also look really nice. Again, the power of growing in small spaces, even if you don't have a garden or a raised bed, these containers are still providing us with some really nice vegetables and some really nice uh, payout for our efforts. The last area we're gonna harvest anything from in terms of tomatoes is here in our long raised bed. Again, these are smaller in terms of the, the development of the plant that didn't get as tall. But just like we've said before, and we keep saying, when the fruit looks like this, you know you're gonna enjoy it. So planting in multiple places makes this more of an ideal procedure because if we're getting a few here, a few somewhere else, and a few in another place, well, pretty soon that few turns into a lot. I also just noticed right behind it, we also have some snap peas that have come in. If you've never grown or tasted these snap peas, fresh, look at that. Eight little peas right there. These are absolutely Delicious. Mm. I'm gonna hold off on harvesting any more of those and let my daughters do it. Because they really they really enjoy the way they taste. So they can come out and have some fresh. There we go. A few more to harvest and we'll be done with our tomatoes. I can feel the ring coming. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to finish up inside, so I'm gonna have to reveal my harvest inside, but I'm gonna show you one more thing that I'm super excited about, a fully ripe jalapeno. And we have a couple of these underneath there that are fully ripe. And I've tried one of the green ones, but I haven't tried one that's fully ripe yet. So I think I'm gonna have to eat this and see how it tastes. But we'll save that for a different video. I don't expect it to be too hot, but I do expect it to be delicious. The only thing is I wanna save the seeds from this so I'll eat it, but I'm going to have to take the seeds out first. When you have precious seeds, you don't want to let them go to waste. We're inside for the big reveal because outside is not so nice right now. But inside couldn't look better. Look at what we just brought in from our harvest. And of course, it's dinner time, so we have some preparation in store for some of these immediately anyway. But look at this, our okra, our summer squash, so many eggplants and onions and tomatoes. Wow, this is definitely the most tomatoes we've brought in and isn't that colorful? Just so many different varieties for us to choose from, to enjoy. Some of them will ripen up in a couple of days and some of them are perfectly sweet and ready to go right now. Our lone cucumber is sitting right here alongside the red peppers, but that's okay. And our centerpiece, well, that would be our red jalapeno. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this video. All of this bounty here on our table, ready for us to eat and enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and let us know how your harvests are going. Remember to share and subscribe, and above all, remember, when you're with us, you're good to grow.